little gray forest brook does the dance of peace. The snake dance by the medicine man and the dance of the dirty blanket by the star of the show, the son of Chief will be gone. Wacky Chief Poo Poo. The automobile brought the white man to the land of the Indian by the thousand. With his efficient rifle and modern gear, he has almost exterminated game from the forest and the fish from the water, depriving the Indian of this means of livelihood. But the automobile also brought the tourist. It is this free spending breed that furnishes 80% of the Indian's income. During the summer months, old chief Getem Wampum and his brave are still scalping the pale faces. With professional promotion and financial help, Mr. and Mrs. Redman polish up on their century-old dances. Costumes and participants are as authentic as it is possible to be. His powwow was primarily for his pleasure, but now is craftily designed to attract the fun-loving, picture-taking vacationers. If we could find a full blood among present day Indians, the white man made a complete conquest of the red man and woman. greet the sunrise, the great spirit Manitou will call to him, come brave warrior to the happy hunting ground, join with your forefathers in the chase of the bear and the buffalo. The spirit of the brave warrior Hawkeye may chase bear and buffalo, but his body is now buried according to the ways of the white man with just a simple and often crude stone. Many times there is no mark or sign. The days of the great burial mound belong to the dim past. Hawkeye is soon forgotten. of the living. Tourists. Tourists in such numbers, they have made it our state's second industry. Some of Michigan's most majestic scenery fills the viewfinders of their cameras. This country is so rich in history, both romantic and bloody. And so long as we have pretty girls, there shall be romance. The people are civilized. Men no longer fight each other. build a lake. Man, exploitation of the Indian. But mostly we have sinned because of our scandalous rape of the forest for greed and gain. Now we are repentant and desire to make amends. Had our 
grandfathers cut a tree and planted a tree, our heritage would be assured. This grand land of ours would still have trees with their tops in the clouds. In Tawa City, Mr. Joe Barkman owns the lumber yard. He treasures this clear white pine slab measuring three inches thick by 30 inches wide by 10 feet high. Inside is a tin type of the very tree from which it was cut back in 1880. Mr. Barkman collects and saves relics of the timber days. One old invoice shows the sale of a 50-foot white pine pole. Price, two dollars. As the shadows begin to lengthen, we must head back up this ancient stream. This river of the tourist and his racing outboard is the same old river that was filled from bank to steep bank with the freshly cut and still bleeding logs of the timberman. And long before the time of the axe man, little Deerslayer and his brothers cavorted on these waters in their birch canoes, while the virgin trees still lived on both these shores. Are you asleep, J. Smith? Or can you hear the cries of your comrades as you heard them before that last day in 1870? Or perhaps your sleep is disturbed by the ghost of Shovigun and his braves as they seek the bear and the buffalo in their haunts in the sky. And so ends another cruise of the Allen Sea. We near the end of our journey into yesterday. Our saga of the savages is over. Sleep in peace, J. Smith. Great trees will once again crown this land. We promise this to our children. They shall have a heritage. Sightedness of the people during the lumber boom is evident even in their graveyard. The live for today to hell with tomorrow attitude accounts for this deserted, desecrated burial ground. Vegetation feeds on decayed bodies and grows profusely. Their stones, like the trees they felled, no longer stand. Stomp. Stomps and stones. This then is the heritage our grandfathers left us. Stomps and stones and bones.